Glory to God. He is good. He is wonderful this morning. Enjoyed the Sunday school lesson that Brother Brian taught this morning. It's just good. The Word of God. We just appreciate God and His goodness and His mercy. and We just love Him so much and appreciate all that He does. And, and like I said, the Word of God we just love and we enjoyed that this, the lesson this morning. We just thank God for this opportunity to minister to His Word this morning. Uh, if they, I didn't give them the scriptures back. So if you want to go on and turn to da, uh, Daniel chapter 5, we'll be starting at verse 1. We do, again, just appreciate His goodness and His mercy. And, and God is just so wonderful to us and uh, so gracious. We enjoy His blessings, uh, the blessings of God in our life. This is a little. This will be a little different this this morning, uh, as we as Pastor asked us to to come and uh, speak. Uh, he had had another brother, I think, scheduled, and he had kind of canceled on him at the last minute, and he asked me to. And God had been dealing with me in this direction for a little while, and uh, I had been kind of wrestling backwards and forwards with it. So, you just pray for us this morning. Uh, I'm uh, going to ask you just a question throughout the Word of God. What will you, what will your last night on this earth be like? Think about it. What will your last night on this earth be like? Each one of us, we're going to face a last night. There's going to be a last night for each one of us. Whether you're a Christian, non-Christian, or whatever, whether you go by the grave or whether you go by the rapture, there's going to be a last night on this earth. Where will you be and what will you be doing? What will God find you doing? Will that night, will it make you nervous? Will it, will it upset you? Or what will God find you doing? We're going to go here in verse 1 and start out here uh, in chapter 5. It says, Belshazzar, Belshazzar the king made a great feast to, to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before or the thousands. Said Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden, gold and the silver vessels which had his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines might drink therein. Let us pray. Father, we do praise and thank you for your word. We thank you for your blessings and your anointing upon us. Father, we thank you for what we've already felt here, for your presence, God, that is so real and so mighty here this evening or this morning, Father. God, we just ask you, Lord, to touch every heart and every life. Father, we ask you, let your anointing flow upon us, Father. Anoint these lips of clay, Father. Lord, to bring forth your word and your message that you would have us to, Father. Father, we ask you, Lord, to speak to hearts and lives, Father. Lord, change. Lord, I pray if they be one here lost that don't know you, Father. I pray before this morning's over, Father, that they will know you as your personal Savior and Lord, Father. Lord, we ask you just wrap thy loving arms around them, Lord. Save them, Father, we pray, God, this morning. Father, we pray, God, for your anointing, that fresh oil, God, to flow upon us and in us, Lord, and upon each one, Lord God, to hear and to receive from your word, Father. God, we just give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, and Jesus wants wonderful name we pray and everyone said amen you may be seated in in the book of Daniel the Bible gives us a good look at the picture of Belshazzar's last night on this on this earth and passing uh, uh, the passing of his kingdom Belshazzar lived in Babylon which Jeremiah called this Babylon the praise of the whole earth Isaiah called it it's the golden city and the glory of the kingdom and the beauty and the beauty of the Chaldeans excellent. This city was a, was such a big city and, and I'll go on a little bit I don't want to bore you too much on it but I want to give you some uh, uh, give you a, a picture of what really this city was like. you know for Jeremiah to say the praises of the glorious, the glory of the kingdom and for the beauty of the Chaldeans excellence that Isaiah spoke of this city was a great city and they and Belshazzar had really planned and he and Nebuchadnezzar had built this city this wonderful city it said it this place was a beautiful of waterways and hanging gardens 
and it had a mountain that they had that he had built for one of his wives that was 400 feet high. Now this was a man-made mountain that Nebuchadnezzar wanted to build just to please one of his wives. So he built this large mountain there are inside that city and it surround, was surrounded by great uh, supporting arches and over 90% of this city was parks, gardens and orchards and beautiful palms and flowers of every des description gracing this mountain top. It was just a beautiful city that they had prepared. They had built this big mountain and stuff. And as they built, Nebuchadnezzar had built the mountain to please these wives that was born in this mountainous country. This great city was surrounded by 60 miles of walls. 60 miles square this city was of walls that they that Bel, uh, Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar had built there in this square. It said, in each side of this city were 25 gates of polished brass, making 100 beautiful sterling gates for entrance into this city. It said the walls of this city were built so that the insurance of safety against any attack the city was thought to be impenetrable. That no one could get into this city unless they opened the gates of this city. They built the walls and that they built these cities so high. It said that the walls here was 87 feet thick. I don't know about you, but I can't imagine a wall being 80, 87 feet thick. And said it re there was also uh, 350 feet high. These walls were not only 87 feet thick, but 350 feet high. They wasn't wanting nobody to come in. They were not looking for the enemy. They thought that they were impenetrable. They thought that there was no way that nobody could get into this city. They built these walls so thick and so high, and they were surrounded by them, and they put all the beauty in that they could into this city and tried to make it. It said, but on these great walls, there was towers put. They were watchtowers that the king could watch over and make sure that there was no enemy approaching. In this city, the was the temple of the heathen God. And this temple was built 660 feet high for this heathen God. You know, they were worshiping these gods. These towers was high. I don't know, it, it, it boggles my mind to think about how much they must have went through and how could they have built a wall that was 87 feet high or 87 feet wide and 350 feet tall. I, I don't understand how that during that time they didn't have the cranes, they didn't have the machinery and things that we have today, but they built these to make this city to be to where they th thought that it was impenetrable, that nobody could get in. Said the palace of Belshazzar was 70 and one half miles in circumference, and it was filled with the spool of conquering foe said it was noted for its wealth having enough provisions within the walls to sustain its population for 20 years. In other words, they had enough food and enough things that they could shut the gates up of that city for 20 years and not have to have nothing come from the outside world. They thought they had it made. They thought they had made walls, that they had their city, that nobody could penetrate it. Nobody could come in unless they wanted them to come in. But I'm telling you today, we can build walls around us. We can do things and we can try to keep God out. We, can, we might keep man out, but I'm here to tell you this morning, you'll not keep God out. Hallelujah to God. He'll penetrate those 87 feet thick, those 350 foot high walls. He can penetrate them when he's ready to go in. When he's ready to speak, he'll walk right in. You may keep people out, but you're not going to keep the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords out this morning. It said this was one of the wealthiest cities in history. Their gold that they had conquered so many and they had got so caught up in themselves. They had got so boastful because they had went into the and destroyed. They had conquered Israel there and they, or the Israelite people and they had destroyed the, the temple and took all the golden vessels out of it and all of those things that had been anointed for God. They took them out and they thought because they'd done that and because they destroyed that Sodom, uh, uh, Sodom's temple that they just 
the, the word of God tells us that it just went into almost uh, crumbled into powder that they had destroyed it so much in this temple and they thought well we've just done away with their God we've tucked their golden vessels we took those things that have been anointed to him we'll just do what we want to do we'll just go our little way we've got our city we've got enough food we've got enough water we got whatever we want right here in our city hallelujah to God they thought they had it made they thought that they could do whatever they wanted to do it said within these yes Belshazzar thought that no one could get to him and he called for the great great feast and the thousands of his lords came came from ever dominion now the Bible tells us that they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver. Hallelujah. You may be praising the gods of gold and silver, but I'm praising the God, the Lord of lords, and the King of kings this morning. Hallelujah to God. Oh, they thought they had it made. They had all this gold, Jim. They had all the wealth. They was the wealthiest city. They had all the food for 20 years. They had, oh, they thought they had it made. They thought, you know, they just had it all. Glory to God. But they were still so serving the wrong God. How about you this morning, friend? Are you serving the true God and the living God? What is your God this morning? Where will you be on that last? What God will you be serving? Will you be true serving the true and living God this morning? Or you will you be serving the heathen God? Will you be serving the gods of your money? The gods of what you can get, your wealth and your prosperity like Belshazzar. They had all the wealth. They thought they had it made. They didn't need nothing else. But friend, I'm telling you, you need the Lord this morning. You may have everything. You may have the finest home that money can buy. You may have the finest automobile that money can buy this morning. You may have the biggest bank account in Boone County and maybe even the biggest one in West Virginia. But I'm telling you, if you don't have God, you don't have nothing. Hallelujah to God. If you don't have the Lord, you don't have nothing. Hallelujah. That'll all vanish. That'll all go away. It can all be tucked in a moment's time. But I'm telling you, when you have the true and the only God in your life this morning, you can lean up on him and you can trust him glory to God through all troubles through all tribulations he'll be there for you he said I'll not leave you I'll not forsake you but he said I'll go all the way to the end glory to God with you you can trust in him glory to God we need to trust in him and not the gods of this world and it said they called for the vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God which was in Jerusalem and the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines began to drink from these vessels. Oh, they just wanted to make fun of God. They just wanted to make fun. They thought they had it made. Oh, they said, we destroyed that little cow. We destroyed their little temple. We just put it to ruins. We just mashed it down. We can do what we want. Hey, we got this party going. Bring those vessels. Hallelujah to God. Those people said they was anointed for that temple. They was anointed for their God. Go get them. Come on. We're going to show their God. We're going to show these people. We're going to drink wine. Hallelujah from them. We're going to go forth. My friend, when you begin to step on God, when you begin to go against him, he'll show you who's God. He'll show you who's God and who ain't, friend. You may get by for a little while. You may be doing good in what you're doing. You may think that you've got it all, the bull by the horn. You may think you've got it made, that now you're impenetrable. But I'm telling you what, there's an all-seeing eye. Oh, this morning that's looking out, glory to God, that he's watching over. They thought they had it made when they drank from this. They were, they were playing loud music. They were dancing. They were laughing loud. Hallelujah to God. They were drinking. Glory to God. They were just playing and having fun with all of their women and their concubines. They were just having a big eye time. Oh, they were drinking from these vessels. They were making fun. They are just so boastful and so proud. It was all built up in Belshazzar. Oh, he knowed he had the bull by the horn. He knowed he had it made. He knowed he had all the wealth. He had all of the food. That he had the walls that nobody could penetrate. That nobody could touch him. Glory to God. But I'm telling you tonight. Hallelujah. The, oh, the word of God tells us that suddenly there was an armless hand which a finger began to write on the wall. Oh, the writing on the wall. Friend, I believe the writing on the wall. That the wall, there's the writing. That God's beginning to write on the wall. You 
know what he's saying. You're weighed in the balance and you're found wanting this morning. If you're here and you're lost and you're undone without God, glory to God, the writing's on the wall. He's calling you. He's telling you it's time to come. Glory to God. You may seek him while he may be found, friend, because I'm telling you there's coming a day and an hour that you're going to cry out to him and he's not going to be there. Glory to God. Let me share a little bit of my testimony with you this morning. I know I I had done, I thought I was like, sort of a lot like this. I thought I had the bull by the horn. I had a good job. I was making good money. I hadn't been married too long. Had a good wife. Had a good home. I was buying stuff. I had a new v, new truck. Just went and bought a brand new gold wing motorcycle. The best that money could buy. Man, I'm telling you, I had it made. I was gone. God was convicting me. God was a draw. He was trying to get me to come. I said, God, I don't have time right now. I just don't have time for you right now, God. I'm having fun. I'm out here enjoying this life. I'm going on on my way. I'm doing my thing, God. I tell you what, God, and this, this was in my stupidity. This was in my ignorance. I said, God, I tell you what, when I get old and right before I get ready to die, I'll call on you and I'll get saved and I'll go on to heaven then. But God, I don't have time right now. I'm enjoying life. I'm enjoying these things I'm doing. But I'm telling you, I was blinded by sin. I was blinded by Satan and didn't realize what was going on. The conviction got so bad that I got down as we, I talked to my wife. I told her, I said, how would you feel if I'd go to church? She said, has it been bothering you as bad as it has been me? I said, oh no, it's been pretty bad. And these was her words. And you'll love this. She said, well, said, we'll start going to church somewhere, but I don't want to go to church of God. I said, well, okay. That's all. We'll go. We've got to go somewhere. And I went home. And she went back. I took her back to work, and I went home. I got down on my knees, cleaving a little trailer there. And I called out to God, and I said, God, save me. The conviction left, but there was a coldness come about me like I never felt before, brother. Don't want to never feel it again. I wouldn't, worst, I wouldn't wish that feeling on my worst enemy. The thought come to me, said, I'll not always strive with man. But he said, I'll turn you over to a reprobate mind. You'll believe a lie and be damned. I said, oh, God, you can't let me go to hell. You've got to save me. God, you've been convicting me. You've been drawing me. You've got to save me. You can't let me go to hell. But there was nothing there but that cold feeling and that feeling that I'd done messed up, brother, that I'd done went too far. I went to work, got home the next night, got home the next night because I was working the evening shift. Here she was rejoicing. She'd went to church of God that night and got saved. Here I am dying inside and wonder, oh God, have I messed up and it went too long and she's rejoicing saying, God save me. I thought, oh God, no, well, the worst in, insult to agony here. Now she's saved and I can't get saved. I went from a Wednesday to Sunday and they, they were starting a revival and she asked me, she said, will you go to revival with me tonight? I said, yeah, I'll go. I went that night, Jim. Went all through the service. I was dead as dead at four, dead at four o'clock. I know. I was, I was dying inside. I was crying, saying, God, you can't let me go to hell. That coldness, that feeling that I don't ever want to feel again, it was eating me inside. It was killing me. She was rejoicing. The people in the church was rejoicing. I was dying. I know I'd done messed up. I'd done put him off and went too late. But you know, when the altar call came, God spoke to me just as plain as I'm speaking to you tonight. He said, son, you don't come on your terms. You come on mine. Now, if you want to get saved, you come on now. And I felt him touch me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. And I went to that altar, and I've been there ever since, friend. He made a believer out of me. 
I wasn't going to wait till I was old and serve him. I wanted to serve him now because I didn't want to go to the devil's hell. Friends, you don't want to go to the devil's hell tonight. If you're lost and you're undone here tonight without him, glory to God, you need him more than you need your next breath, glory to God. Because if you leave this world, you don't want to leave it without him, glory to God. You want to leave it with Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, friend. Glory to God. If I was lost here this morning, I wouldn't wait for an altar call. These are are open at any time, glory to God, to be saved, glory to God. It's in order for you to be saved, glory to God. Don't wait too late because God will cut you off, friend. He, I know we live under the law of grace, but his grace will run out if you keep pushing him off. These guys, Belshazzar, he, had, uh, he was so built up with pride and they were playing their music and they were dancing and they were having their big eyed time. They knew they had it made but this hand began to ride on the wall. Friend, the hand is riding for you tonight. That hand is riding on the wall this morning for you and for you saying come home. You that are heavy laden and with a heavy heart, glory to God. He's saying come home. Come to these altars. Come on back. You that are backslidden, he's calling you. You that have drawn cold upon him, he's calling you this morning saying come home. Hallelujah to God. He's saying come home while the Spirit of God is moving. While the Spirit of God is beckoning you this morning to come. He's saying come. Hallelujah to God. As, they, as this finger began to ride on the wall, the music stopped, the loud laughter stopped, the drinking stopped, the spirit of this festival changed. I'm telling you, friend, when you think you're doomed and when you see the handwriting on the wall, the spirit will change. You won't be as happy as you was. You won't be so boastful and build up in yourself like you was. He'll take you down. He took me down to make me look up. And I thank God he did that I'm where I am today. Glory to God. It says when you do, do wrong, there is a voice with, within you that testifies against you. Although, although there was no audible voice, Belshazzar realized that the writing was the hand of of God's judgment the writing of God's judgment friend see I believe and I, I don't think there's many in here that will disagree with me that we're in the last days I believe we're in the last of the last days Jesus is getting ready to split the eastern sky friend if you don't know him it's time to get in hallelujah to God it's time that judgment is beginning to begin the judgment of God is beginning. Belshazzar realized that this hand was the judgment of God. Although he could not read the writing that was on the there, he knew that this was a summons to judgment and that he had to appear before God. Friend, the Word of God tells us every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. I'm telling you, you don't want to wait till judgment day. Hallelujah. To bow your knee before him then. You need to bow your knees this morning and call upon the Lord while he may be found. Glory to God. Oh, bless his holy name. The Word of God records in that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldean slain in Daniel 5 and 30. In that night, the night of his glory and fame, the night of his fun and pleasure, Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, was slain. He thought he had it made. He was having this big party. They were having their good time. They were dancing. They were doing, making merry. Oh, they had it made. But he didn't realize this night, oh, this may be your morning, or this may be your night that he's saying, Come on, come on to me. This is your day. This is your night. Glory to God. He In his final, it said that there was no previous warning that it would be the final night of his senses came, and his senses came as a sudden shock. It came that the highest time when he had the least prepared for it. In his estimates, he was just beginning to live. 
He had prepared to live but not to die. That's the way the world is today. We're preparing to live. We're not preparing to die, but let me tell you something, friend. Today is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. We are going to die. He's going to call the Jesus Christ is going to split the eastern sky. Will you be ready? What will you be doing on that night? That night that he had Belshazzar, he, this, he didn't expect it this night. This was a night that he was to party, that he was to have a good time. He had it made. He had all the wealth he wanted. He had all the women he wanted. He had all of the stuff inside, the food, the good gold, the silver that he wanted. He had everything seemingly he wanted inside there. But he didn't have the Lord. He wasn't trusting him. Don't let the things of this world destroy you, friend. He said, in it, it was the, a greater, great, great night, that thrilling night, but for Belshazzar, it was his most tragic night and the night of his departure. Friend, we have no promise of tomorrow. We have no promise of the next minute. And I'm not trying to preach you a scared religion or scare you. I just want you to come to reality and realize the next moment may be your last. This may be your last night. Where will you be? Will you be ready to meet Jesus if he calls are you ready this morning? Are you ready, friend, to meet Jesus if he calls you? Are you ready? Daniel told, told after this writing, let me back up and give a little bit. After the hand come upon this, Belshazzar called for all the soothsayers. He called for the magicians. He called for all of his people to come and interpret this writing on the wall that this finger had left. None of them could interpret it. None of them could do it. Then all of a sudden the queen came in and she told Belshazzar, she said, there's a man that interprets dreams. That the li Now listen, that the living and true God lives inside. The devil the world knows where the God lives inside you or not, friend. They know what you are. They know where the God's in you. They can feel it. If God's inside you, they can feel the Spirit of God from you. But they called on Daniel. And Daniel had already, on, on his grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar, had interpreted a dream for him. And that's why the, that's why the queen knew who to call on. That he, she knew that the God, the true God lived inside him and that he could do this. Daniel was probably about 80 years old from what I can understand from writers and things. He was approximately 80 or maybe a little bit older than 80 years old when this was going on. They brought him in to interpret this. He, Belshazzar told him, said, I'll give you, a, put a golden chain around your neck. I'll give you within, I think, a third of the kingdom if you will interpret this writing on the wall for me. If you would just read this to me and give me the interpretation of it. And Daniel said, I don't need your stuff. I don't need that. But I'll interpret it for you. And he began to interpret that, that vision was in there. And he told Nebuchadnezzar, and I'm just going to give you part of it. He said, you are weighed in the balance. And you are found wanting. In other words, this night, this night, you're going to die. The judgment of God had come home to Belshazzar. Daniel told the king that he had refused to honor and worship the one true God and instead chose to worship and praise the gods made out of gold, silver, bronze and other metals that Daniel quickly pointed out are not really gods at all. Daniel pointed out to the king that these gods couldn't see hear, understand anything. But he had made the mistake of honoring and worshiping 
them instead of the God of heaven. How many people are walking around today that are making this same mistake? They're not worshiping the true God. They're worshiping the gods of gold and silver. They're worshiping the gods of this world instead of the true God. Scripture doesn't tell us at this point how Belshazzar responded to what Daniel was saying, but I imagine he was even whiter than he was, uh, than he had been earlier when he had seen the hand of God on the wall. He knew that he had messed up. But you know the sad thing about this is, even though he knew the handwriting of the, on the wall was God, even though he knew the prophet of God had told him this was going to be his last day, he still refused to repent. He still refused to repent and call on the Lord. How many people today do we see walk out the doors and say, no, I don't want you today. No, I don't want you. Friend, it's a dangerous, dangerous thing to walk out of a service that God is moving and say, no, not today, God. Because I'm telling you, you don't want to feel what I felt. And if you're lucky, that's what you'll feel other than just never be able to make it in. There's been so many people walk into our church. I could name names and go beyond that's left out of service that the Holy Ghost even spoke and beckoned for them to come and go out and drive down the road and get in a car wreck and die lost and go to the devil's hell because they refuse to call on God. He said, but I want you, want you to notice what the king did not do. He didn't humble himself before God. He didn't cry out to repentance of his, of his or asked for forgiveness like, Neb like Nebuchadnezzar did his grandfather had done and as a result that very night his enemies managed to sneak into the city that was impenetrable the city his enemies came into the city that had 87 feet thick walls 350 foot high had all of this that was supposed to be impenetrable but his enemies came in that night and killed Belshazzar. As the prophet Daniel said, this night you will die. Friend, in Luke chapter 12, there's a similar, similar similarity, just a little bit of a story of verse 16 through 20. And this being Jesus, Jesus here said, And he, which being Jesus speaking a parable unto them, asking, uh, speaking unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have, have no room there to bestow my fruit. And he said, This will I do. I will put down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruit and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. You see, that's what the world's saying. Let me keep bestowing. Let me keep putting up. Let me get this and put this back. Let me get this. I've got this. Let me save this. Put this back that I've got it made. But I like this next verse. Think about it, friend, what I'm getting ready to say. But God, but God said, but God said, Today is the day of salvation. But God said, prepare to meet me. God, but God said, I'm coming. 
after those that are ready. But God said, this is the day of salvation. Come. He said, but God said unto him, thy fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Where were you being on your last night on earth? Where will you be the last night of your life on this earth? How will you stand with God? It says, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. My friend, let us stand. If somebody would come to the piano. Where will you be? the last night of your life friend what will God find you doing the word of God tells us that he wants us to be found so doing trusting him as our Lord and Savior knowing him as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords go ahead when you're ready sis. If you don't know Jesus Christ this morning as your Savior and Lord, friend, I wouldn't wait. This altar's open. Where will you be? How will you be found? Will God have to look at you and say, you're weighed in the balance and found wanting? Friend, how do you Each one of us think about this this morning. How do you weigh in God's scales? In God's scales, how do you weigh today? How do you stand up to God and before Him? Has that grace, has that blood of Jesus Christ been applied? Sinner friend, why don't you come? Church, pray. Pray, church. Pray. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Don't turn him away, friend. Don't turn him away this morning. If you're here, if you're a backslider, If you don't know him as your Savior and Lord, don't turn him away. Why don't you come, friend? Why don't you come? This is your day. This is your hour. God didn't put this message on my heart for nothing. He said, you're weighed in the balance and you're found wanting. This is the day of salvation. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, get your way this morning. How do you weigh with the Lord this morning, friend? Do you know Him as your Lord and Savior? How about a young person? Do you know Him? It's never too young to know Him. It's never too young to serve the Lord. One of the biggest regrets I have is I never served Him when I was younger. You see, I wasn't raised in a home a Christian home. I didn't know what it was like for my mom to cry out for me and pray for me. I didn't know what it was like for my dad to cry out and pray. How about it, friend? Will you come this morning? Is there one? Is there one that you would come this morning and receive Him as your Lord and Savior? With every eye closed and every head bowed. Is there one year this morning that you would raise your hand? I won't come back to you, friend. I won't embarrass you. Just raise your hand and signify and say, pray for me that I won't wait too late. Pray for me that I can make that decision and give my life to Him. Is there one? Is there one?
all righty. I won't turn. These altars are open. Why don't you come when us all gather around and have a season of prayer? You've got loved ones. You've got friends that are lost. Come and pray and ask God to save them. Intercede as it was in our Sunday school lesson this morning. Intercede in prayer for them and, and <laughs> intercede that they'll be saved. Pray that God would do something some way or another that they would surrender. That someone would say something or do something that would touch them that they would give their life to Him. Why don't you come, church? Come on, let's pray.